Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Back with part four of this spirit-led teaching. Um, and I know it's evening, but I always say morning because it's always morning in the spirit. It's, it's never night in the spirit. It's always morning. It's always light. It's never night. So anytime I begin a video, it's always good morning, my brothers and sisters. Uh, good morning, my brothers and sisters on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we're back with part four of this spirit led teaching. Knowing the difference, separating the difference between religious repentance in the flesh and gospel based repentance in the spirit. And when I say gospel based repentance in the spirit, we're not repenting from the gospel. It is the gospel which is gives us the faith. It is the gospel that works in our spirit to show us our true spiritual condition. Because religious repentance, when you have Bible-based religion in the flesh, but you're in your carnality under law in the spirit under the law of commandments in the spirit, you can't see your true spiritual condition. Because you have the judgment of religious leaders and teachers in the flesh and you might ha have their approval in the flesh, but you can't see your true spiritual condition unless faith brings you to a place of it in the spirit. So religious repentance is actually false repentance. You're repenting for things you may have done in the flesh, acts of sin in the flesh. But what was carrying out those acts of sin in the flesh was the fruit of sin, which is the work of sin in your spirit. You're carnal under the law of commandments as a transgressor. So you can't see your true spiritual condition. And until you can see your true spiritual condition, there can be no true repentance. There can be no true repentance. You have to go from law to grace. And only Christ can take us there. Only Christ can take us from law to grace and show us our true spiritual condition and work within us true repentance because we have sinned against the true and living God. Not us, but, but sin through us because sin is bigger than us, but Christ is bigger than sin. So he's our only victory over sin. Let us go to uh, Galatians chapter 3. Verse 22 and 23, 22, but the scripture had concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe that the promise of faith by Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So God had concluded all under sin. His whole entire fallen creation, spiritual creation, he has concluded us all under sin so that the promise of faith may be given to all. All that believe. Now, when we were in Bible-based religion, in the flesh, those acts of obedience in the flesh pointed to that we believed in what was to come in the spirit. That was faith. Okay, that was faith. That the promise might of faith might be sure to all that believe. 22, 23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. That's the law of commandments. Shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. After Christ paid the sin debt, then faith would be revealed to your spirit. But before that, we were shut up under the law. We were shut up from faith. Okay? Because we couldn't see faith dead in sin because then we would, we would have remained that way forever. So we were kept under the law. Now, we, we could have Bible-based religion under the law, but we couldn't have true repentance under the law. And with Bible-based religion, not Christianity, Bible-based religion, we repented for what we did. But there was no repentance for sin. Because we were dead in our sins. So how can we being dead in sin repent for sin? We couldn't. We could only repent for the acts of sin that were being carried out that we did not have the power to prevent. 
So we repented for the acts of sin. And when we repented for the acts of sin, we were unrepentant for the fruit of sin because we were dead in sin under the law. We were dead in the sins and transgressions of the law. But was the sin that was paid? And uh, sin, we were separated from sin by the death of Christ and our spirit being born into the life of Christ. Faith was revealed to our spirit. Faith began to work true repentance in our spirit. Then, once we saw our true spiritual condition, we repented for sin. We repented for sin. That means when we repented for sin, we had to deny ourselves in sin to receive the righteousness of God in faith. So we went from the law of commandments as being guilty as transgressors, do that penalty under the law of commandments, to faith under faith in the law of life, which is in Christ. And that penalty was wiped out. It was, it was put under the blood. It was put under the revelation of the spirit. The revelation of the spirit, which is the blood of the spirit, blotted out that penalty. Blotted out that penalty. So faith has to be revealed to your spirit. And when faith is revealed to your spirit, true repentance is worked in your spirit. But until faith is revealed, there can be no true repentance. There can be no true repentance for sin because one in the deadness of their sins and trespasses cannot see sin. So uh, faith has to work that. And once faith begins to work it, to begin to show you the error of your way, we have to be careful not to harden up. Through being approved in the flesh by religious leaders in the flesh, it can lead you to a hard heart towards true light, towards Christ in the spirit. Because he's showing you your ungodly condition. He's showing you that you're unblessed in spirit, where religious leaders are telling you you're blessed in the flesh, but most of the time they're just telling you that for their own benefit. And a lot of times they themselves don't know because they're just following tradition. There's the biblical church, and then there's the gospel church. But the gospel church is... is it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Once you're in the gospel, the Lord will lead you to those places that need the gospel. A gospel church is they've gone from being under the authority of the letter of Christ and that, that, that pastor which is operating under the name of Christ and they're under the anointing of Christ. Now they're all connected at the root of Christ and all joined together as one in the flesh by the fruit of Christ. But their submission is to the person Christ. Okay, their submission is to the person Christ. Whereas in a biblical church, they're under the authority of the letter of Christ and in submission to that, that pastoral male who is in the office of Christ. So that, that's, that's the biblical church. There can be a gospel church if that church does not reject the gospel. But most of the time when you have religious approval in the flesh and Christ sends a vessel of light, there's a denial of that light because it's an offense when they see their, their ungodly condition in the spirit. This is why when you get true spirit led teachings, you have to examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith and get out your feelings because they're going to get hurt. They're going to get hurt. Faith will not minister to your feelings. Faith doesn't minister to your flesh. It ministers to your spirit and brings you spiritually to a place of true repentance. True repentance. Okay, so don't harden up. Don't harden up against that. We're going to go to uh, get into the teaching of. We're going to go to Proverbs. Chapter one, verse seven, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So God has not, according to uh, 
2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and of a sound mind. Okay, this fear here is talking about the fear of the Lord being the reverence of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the spirit of the Lord. Okay, the fear of the Lord is the, that's the spirit of the Lord, is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise it. They despise light, but they're, they're going to embrace darkness because we're born in spiritual darkness. All right. And we're told a lot of lies in spiritual darkness. So when light comes and shines that light on our true condition, those that are in their feelings and not in faith, they tend to get easily offended. But Jesus said, blessed are those who are not offended in me. There's a reason he says that. Let us go to Proverbs chapter one, verse 24 through 33. This is what happens when you harden your heart to true repentance. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, and that co covers man and woman, no man regarded. They were, they were really playing church. But you have set at naught all my counsel, all his divine wisdom, they set it at naught. And would have none of my reproof, they would not receive that spiritual correction when it showed them their true spiritual condition. They refused to truly repent. Okay. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear coming. You see, the very thing you fear is going to come up on you. But then when you're going to call on him, this to this, he says, I will laugh at your calamity when it comes, because then they're going to be ready to repent. Okay, I will mock when your fear cometh. See, I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear comes as a desolation and your destruction coming as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Now remember, he brought light to them, but they didn't want to hear light. They hardened up to light. Look what he says. Then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. Now they're going to be ready to repent, but they're not going to be ready to repent repent from sin, the cost of it then caught up to them. Their sin then found them out. The cost of it then caught up to them. Then they're going to call upon me, but I will not answer. Because when through his election, the four chosen, through his election, he made the call to them and manifest that light to them, they hearten to it. They turned their back on it. But I will not answer them. They shall seek me early, or they're going to seek him early when the cost comes. But listen, they shall not find me. They ain't going to find him, but they're going to seek him and they're going to seek him early because that when the cost comes, you're going to know the cost doesn't come. When that penalty falls, it's going to fall because when we receive that penalty for sin, remember we're, we're, we're at our root. We're under the law. We're at our root or in... We at our root are in the, the root of sin and at the fruit we're bound to the flesh. In the flesh we're bound by the fruit of sin. All right. So when that penalty drops under grace, under law, we receive it in the spirit. That impacts us in the spirit and also impacts our flesh because the flesh is bound by the fruit of, uh, of Satan's spirit. So we receive the full penalty. The full penalty. And we, we have to be careful of that to make sure we come to a true place of true repentance. Not, not Bible-based repentance, because that's religion repent, religious repentance. The, God, the Lord himself gave us Bible-based religion. It wasn't Christianity. It was religion. We associated Christianity with the Bible because under the law, we didn't know any better. And we associated uh, prosperity with money because we didn't know any better. But once we're born into the light, we see the difference between Christianity and the Bible, and we see the difference between prosperity and money, but we didn't know that in the dark. We didn't know any better. We didn't know any better. So he says, they shall call upon me. I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they're not going to find me. He says, they're not going to find him. 
for that they hated knowledge. And to hate knowledge is to hate the spirit. That's to hate life. Remember, he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. His people is his fallen creation. We didn't cease to be his creation. We're still a creation of Christ. We're just a fallen creation. We cease to be his children, but we're still, we're still his creation, a fallen creation, which means we're still his people. We're destroyed for lack of knowledge because we no longer had the spirit due to the fall, our fall from grace. For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Why didn't they choose the fear of the Lord? Because he says, I said before you light and darkness, choose light and live. He puts before us that gospel light so we can see the, the contrast between gospel light and biblical darkness. The letter of Christ is the religion of Christ. The gospel of Christ is the life of Christ. Salvation and deliverance, true repentance, it's in the life. It's not in the letter. It's in the life. Okay, therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way. And it doesn't matter who we are. When we deny light to continue in darkness because it's working for us at the moment, when the cost come, he will permit us to eat the fruit of what we have chosen. Because when you choose darkness over the light, over light, you're going to eat the fruit of it. See, death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it are going to eat the fruit thereof. Because you lusted to keep on in death, you're going to eat the fruit of it. You're going to have to eat it. You're going to have to eat it. And be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. For the turning away of the simple, simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them, which is false prosperity. Remember, we, in our carnality under the law, we associated Christianity with the Bible and we associated prosperity with money. But once we're born into the light, we see the difference between Christianity and the Bible and prosperity and money. Uh, money must come under the stewardship of prosperity. Okay, it must come under the stewardship of prosperity and the letter must come under the teaching of the light, which is true Christianity. But whoso hearkened unto me, whoso hearkened unto me, shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of the Lord. They're going to be at peace in the fear of the Lord. Don't, there's nothing wrong with having money. Don't. I don't want anyone to misunderstand what I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with having lots of money. But the Lord just wants us to have it in the right perspective to where it comes under the, under the stewardship under the stewardship of your wealth and you're not using it to define yourself as wealth because then it, then it becomes false prosperity. Then you're using it unlawfully. It becomes a substitute uh, for prosperity because you're not operating in true prosperity. All right. So this was part four of this teaching. Because we had to reveal the, the consequences of what happens when the Lord brings light to us and we harden up to continue in a way that is not of light because the consequences haven't come at the time and we're benefiting it, we're benefiting at the time. All right. So let's all take heed to true light when we when we get it and uh pray for that conversion. Pray for, for pray to be born of the Spirit. Because anything outside of the spirit, it's just, it's, it's wasted prayers. It's wasted prayers because sin cannot enter into the throne of God. God is in the first heaven. If you're in your sins and trespasses, you're in the second heaven, Ephesians 6, 12. That's where your prayers are being, are, are reaching the second heaven. But once you're born into the light, you're in the first heaven. And he's going to reveal himself to you in the spirit, and you'll be able to respond accurately and prayerfully in righteousness by revelation of the spirit. And then you're going to see what it is for the Lord to be able to respond to your prayers. All right.
that brings us to the end of this teaching. Uh, I love you and I thank you. And I'll see you in the next series. God bless you. Amen.